everyone, David here, back again to review The Walking Dead, and this time it is for episode, I don't know, I can't remember the number, but I do remember the title, which is ironically Remember. <laughs> I remember the title, it's called Remember. And that title is immensely important to this episode, because that's precisely what almost every character did while when they finally walked and absorbed the community of Alexandria, which... Uh, has driven me to want to grab a silver spoon and eat my own words from last week's uh, review because at the end of that review I said that Alexandria may or may not be a real thing. Turns out it's a real community. It really is a real community. There's a bunch of really nice suburban houses. It's it's very tame. It's very well put together. But it's uh, there's also another uh, uh, another thing that the characters uh, uh, mention. Uh, two particular power players, Carl and uh, Carol, who point out that it also looks a little bit too tame. It looks like uh, these people, though they were able to find ways to salvage themselves with food and water in a really uh, great environment to ra to not only grow up in and all but also thrive, that could also potentially make them weak. Just like here in real life, uh, having uh, uh, living expense or living luxuries like food and water and electricity, what are we going to do when shit hits the fan? Should there, hypothetically speaking, uh, there be a zombie apocalypse? I mean, who's actually going to survive and who's not? Let's just say the people who do uh, outdoors live, uh, outdoor living, you know, who go camping regularly and who are hunters, chances are those guys are going to excel a little bit better at surviving in a zombie apocalypse. Hence, Daryl, Rick, who's a cop, Michonne. Uh, granted, we've seen Michonne's backstory, but... What I liked about them walking into Alexandria, which, like I said, I, I'm really surprised and very glad that this is a legit place that is an actual community. And to be honest, it was a little weird that last week we had those those sound effects of children playing, but then when we walk into Alexandria, even though it's a real place, it's also a little bit too deserted to be, be able to make that kind of noise. So I'm like, okay, the sound effects people kind of messed up last week because there's clearly not an awful lot of kids playing around to be able to generate that kind of noise. But one of the things that I really loved about this episode was that the the entire group is now, uh, 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 or at least for either this episode and possibly even the next episode, they're almost like the cipher for us, the viewers, because I was right there with almost everybody. I saw what Rick was talking about, what Michonne was talking about, what even Daryl was talking about, because... Uh, I was just along with them in terms of being skeptical that this place was legit and also having that, that, that sliver of optimism, hoping that this place is legit because we really do not want to continuously move to yet another backdrop that's just full of woods and grass and just uh, dire... Uh, dire circumstances. We actually want to find a place to stay and sure there might be melodrama and sure even if it's a little bit too good to be true this is The Walking Dead so something bad is <laughs> bound to happen but for now I do want to find a new place with new characters so that we can have a really good setup for what's coming next and I think that this episode really solidified that really well because as soon as we walk in we are introduced to the character of Deanna who's kind of like the mayor-ish of the community. I mean, she's not in charge, but at the same time, she kind of has the mindset to know who should belong within the community. And it is her mindset to say, yes, Rick, you and your group need to be part of this community because we can tell that you guys are strong together. And she even has that line when she goes over to the house saying, how can people who are completely uh, unlike each other and have almost nothing in common D develop a, a, some sort of family and uh, uh, Deanna really uh, really loves that about this group and that's why she says I want to take you guys in and I love this first scene where she introduces the concept of interviews practically interviewing every group of the uh, every member of the group throughout the episode we cut back to these interviews and that presented a new perspective not only technically because we saw those little POV shots where we saw the point of view uh, from the perspective of the camera and the footage is, is different and it looks all grainy and I like that the director who's Greg Nicotero once again decided to include that uh, to kind of change up the visual style of The Walking Dead. I really like it whenever Nicotero directs because he was the one who did the the episode with Tyrese's death and you know how the whole thing felt kind of dreamlike it felt like a, almost a Terrence Malick movie and that felt very different for The Walking Dead. Here it didn't it, it didn't feel as different, but I like that he included um, some found footage type of clips of the interviews where the footage is all grainy and the audio is kind of muffled, and I like that. And what I also liked is that when Deanna would conduct these interviews, 
they would happen in scenes that pertain to that particular character. And that's why the title of this episode, Remember, really becomes important because in each one of these scenes, it's almost like every character remembers what it used to be like, not only for their past life, but also what it was to survive out there and now to finally find a place where they got electricity and showers and everything. They're like, oh my God, I remember this stuff. And it really takes them all back. The one that affected me the most was the one with Carl, where he meets those kids and they ask him to play video games or to play a billiard and they introduce one, uh, uh, they introduce themselves to him. And when they ask him to play video games, it just, uh, there's something that clicks in Carl's mind that he's like, video games, I remember that. And he's just, he's practically floored. And even the other kid says, yeah, it took her t uh, three weeks to even talk because she barely remembered this. And that scene really affected me an awful lot because he forgot what it's like to be a kid. And that, just the, mention, the mentioning of video games and being able to actually play them. Because we had that scene way back, I think, in either last season or the season after, uh, before that, where he walked into, the, into that house and he saw the table. Uh, I mean, he saw the TV and the video games and everything, but he couldn't actually play because there was no electricity. So the whole thing was very um, uh, uh, futile. And he was just like... Shit, I wish I could I could do this, but I can't. And now that he can, he's like, oh my god, is, is it possible that I can actually have a childhood here? And so he was completely shocked by that. And plenty of other characters also had moments like that where they're like, wow, I can't, uh, I can barely remember normal life. And along with that, they also meet some brand new characters that, like I said, I love that we're changing up not only the, the setting, but we're introducing some new characters so that we can have some brand new drama besides the walkers and besides simply just surviving. And it, Carl did that with those kids, and we also got Glenn here who gets into a little bit of a scuffle with one of the new characters, and I'm interested to see where that happens. And it is also in this scene where Deanna really hits the point across with Rick and Michelle and the rest of the group that this place is legit because she comes in and she, uh, she practically becomes the moderator, saying, hey, both of you, calm down. These are the rules. Follow them. She doesn't take any sides. She plays it fair. And that really clicks with everybody. Even Glenn is kind of, like, surprised when she says thank you. And he's like, for what? For knocking him on his ass because he was getting kind of, uh, he was being a bit of a douche. And so that's the thing that makes everyone go, yeah, I think we're staying. However, we did sadly lose yet another character on The Walking Dead in this week's episode. It was a character that was uh, around for a really long time, uh, a really long time uh, throughout the show for the past couple of seasons or so, and it, it it was a bit of a bittersweet moment to see this character go. And yes, I'm talking about Rick's beard. Rick's beard is gone. It's gone. The bush is gone. Ah, <sighs> he. Saved it and then donated it to Will Forte for The Last Man on Earth. <laughs> if you guys haven't heard, there's a new show called The Last Man on Earth with Will Forte. And it's about the apocalypse, about him being the only guy on Earth. And from what I hear, it's pretty good. I haven't checked it out. But anyways, I don't know why I'm promoting that show while I'm talking about The Walking Dead. But Rick finally shaves and gets a haircut. And you could say that this serves as a bit of a metaphor for Rick finally deciding to become one with this community. Saying, okay, I will adapt. I will join uh, this community and and settle and see how this works out. Of course, he's he's not letting his guard down by that because of that last those last few lines that he had at the end, at the end of the episode where he says that hey we are not going to become weak because you got the second person who's raising that concern which was Carol, and being that he was in the audience of Carol and Daryl, Carol and Daryl, he goes ahead to say if they become weak and they're taken out, we are taking over the place. So there's still a little bit of the of this new, uh, much more brutal, uh, yet uh, very instinctual Rick still residing with them, despite uh, it, despite putting in efforts to want to become part of this community as the new sheriff. And I'm also liking what they're doing with him and this character Jesse, who's the one that gives him the the haircut. The only thing that I did not like about the episode was the introduction of Jesse's husband, who's definitely going to have something to do with Rick and his uh, his connection with Jesse. I'm not going to call it a relationship just yet, but his connection. Because there's no way that they're going to show Jesse in two scenes in this episode and not go anywhere with that. Plus, while I was looking for pictures for, for my review, I noticed there were a couple of, of photos where it showed Jesse and her husband next to their comic book counterparts. So there's definitely something there that is of some kind of importance that has to do with Rick. 
But the only thing that I didn't like is that it was very unsubtle the way they introduced her, uh, her husband. We didn't get a good look at him, but that's just it. He's in the shadows, very ominous. He's smoking a cigarette and he's like, Welcome to Alexandria. I'm like, okay, thank you, new villain. So if you want to break it down, this episode had more in common with them, with the episode entitled Them, that was a little bit slower, it was more about the characters hitting rock bottom, and it wasn't necessarily one of my favorite episodes of the of this latter half of the fifth season. Excuse me. But the change in scenery, the change in environment, and the introduction of new characters and what uh, that could mean for the rest of the season definitely spices things up and keeps things uh, fresh. And the word that kept popping into my mind when, uh, as the episode went on, getting introduced to these characters and having our old characters remember about what it was like to grow up in this kind of kind of environment was reinvigorated. I feel like the show is becoming much more reinvigorated with the plethora of characters we got introduced to and what they what that could mean for not only the story but for the characters that we have been following this whole time. So for that, I give Remember a high 8 out of 10. Definitely a, a highlight in the latter half of the of the of the 5th season and I'm definitely looking forward to what happens next for the, the remainder of the season as we get to know more about these characters. The only thing that I'm hoping we also get to see because it's 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 a nitpick that I had with this episode, but it's one that I didn't consider as a bad thing about the episode because I know that it could get fixed because of the fact that it's a show and that is that characters like uh, Abraham and um, and uh, Eugene and Maggie and I mean sure we saw a little bit of Maggie here and there but I want to see what the rest of the group uh, does in the town of uh, in the community of Alexandria because all of our characters got jobs I want to see what their jobs uh, are going to be and how they fit into the community and poor Judith is just dang dangling here for dear life <laughs> oh my god Judith too I want to see what uh, job they give Judith that'll be interesting Thank you guys for watching, I'll see you guys next time.